Next, we have Abhishek Teli from the University of Pune. You can begin, Abhishek. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Abhishek, and I'm from uh, Institute of Bioinformatics and Biotechnology. I'm working as a PhD student under Dr. Tuli Day. Uh, first of all, I will take this opportunity to thank uh, India AMBO for this opportunity to deliver a short oral presentation. So today I'm going to talk about spheroids and organoids and how using these spheroids and organoids, how we can study uh, crosstalk between the immune cells and tumor cells. So this cartoon is now telling about what I'm going to talk about in the next 10 minutes. So I will be mostly talking about the tumor microenvironment, especially the tumor immune microenvironment, uh, uh, and how we can recapitulate this tumor immune microenvironment using a simple model as a spheroids. Then, uh, uh, especially, uh, the most important part of the tumor microenvironment is macrophages and how we can recapitulate the complex mechanism of uh, macrophage recruitment towards the tumor microenvironment using these spheroids. And then how this spheroid brainwash these macrophages in to, perform, to become a tumor associated macrophages. And upon becoming these tumor associated macrophages, how these TAMs help cancer cells to invade into the surrounding tissue. So first, as we all know that tumor is not just a mass of transformed cells growing uncontrollably, but it's a complex consortium of malignant and non-malignant cells working together. And the non-malignant cells constitute a part of tumor microenvironment. These have a complex crosstalk between each other and that constitutes a tumor microenvironment. So in order to get rid of these tumors, we will have to uh, uh, target uh, tumor cells along with the uh, tumor microenvironment. So several attempts have already been made to target that target uh, tumor microenvironment. The classical example that we all know that the checkpoint inhibitor, then uh, we, uh, the T cell or the regulatory population depletion, uh, then the cancer cell vaccines, and most importantly, depletion of uh, immune suppressive cells or uh, their repolarization into anti-tumor cells. So about this, uh, 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 the macrophages have been uh, repetitively uh, been a famous target of uh, repolarization. So, but all these studies have, previous studies have been made using a wrong model system that is mouse. And since yesterday we are uh, listening about, we are not uh, 70 kg rats and blah, blah. So, uh, it is very well explained by uh, uh, this uh, term that un it is an unphysiologic disease that are intrinsic only to the model and not to the human condition. So what do we need is we need a human relevant model uh, which can recapitulate the architectural characteristics of tumor which will recapitulate pathophysiology, heterogeneity, complex extracellular matrix and the complex crosstalk between the cells, different types of cells. So our lab works with uh, 3D tumor uh, spheroids which mimics the pathophysiological gradients that are present into in vivo tumors. So what I do is we work, we are working with breast cancers. So I generate, uh, I culture these uh, breast cancer uh, cell lines, MCF7 and 231 using liquid overlay method and they form uh, this beautiful compact three dimensional sphere like structures, which we call as spheroids. But as you all know that uh, not, not a single model is a perfect one and it comes with its inherent limitations. So to overcome uh, these in inherent limitations of this model, I thought we need some little bit of uh, upgradation in this uh, model, which will recapitulate the tumor microenvironmental features. Like it will ca recapitulate the presence of tumor cell ECM and their crosstalk between each other. And most importantly, the physical and chemical barriers that an immune cell faces while reaching towards the tumor microenvironment. So why TAMs? Because TAMs are being the most abundant uh, type of cell population in the tumor microenvironment. And they are known to perform plethora of protumorogenic functions. And if we get rid of these protumorogenic functions, they are we then we are no far from getting rid of cancer. So when I begin my work, I was wondering uh, where these stamps are coming from. Like, are these uh, tumor resident macrophages, like those are present in brain, like microglia or Kupffer cells that are present in liver or alveolar macrophages, or are these cells coming from the monocyte or blood-derived cells? So after a brief re uh, research study, I found that the, in case of breast cancer, these are uh, these are coming from the blood-derived monocytes. So during normal process. During immunosurveillance, these monocytes, they come from the circulation, come out from the circulation, 
uh, travels through the extracellular matrix and reaches the tumors uh, or, or uh, tissue sites where they, uh, depending upon the local signal, they get differentiated and they can perform either housekeeping function or they can perform pro-inflammatory function to get rid of infections or any transformed cells present there. As these stages turn into an early stage tumor, which we are recapitulating using spheroids, these are getting t t trained by or brainwashed by the tumor-derived factors and then they are behaving differently. As the tumor progresses to the late, later stages, they are further brainwashed to perform pro-tumorogenic functions. And there we called as TAMS. So now I have a tumor model with spheroids. Uh, now I need uh, immune cells, macrophages. So as this, those were monocyte-derived macrophages, I started my preliminary work with a uh, leukemic monocyte cell line. And we can just simply treat these cell lines with a four-ball ester, and then they turn into these beautiful activated macrophages. Further, these activated macrophages can be polarized into pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory, depending upon uh, what you are adding. I, I mean, the pro-inflammatory signal LPS, they can turn them into pro-inflammatory, and uh, cytokines like interleukin-4, they can turn into uh, anti-inflammatory macrophages. And then the, the, this, I, was, I have confirmed with their secretory, uh, analysis of their secretory molecules, so pro-inflammatory uh, uh, activated macrophages uh, express them at a basal level, whereas there is a pregulation of pro-inflammatory cytokines in case of pro-inflammatory macrophages, and a pregulation of anti-inflammatory uh, cytokines in case of these anti-inflammatory macrophages. So now I have a spheroid as a tumor model. I have uh, monocytes and uh, monocyte-derived macrophages in my hand. So what I need to do, uh, I, what I wanted to do is recapitulate the complex uh, uh, journey of macrophage from uh, the extracellular matrix towards the tumor microenvironment. So for that, uh, we developed a novel model where we uh, put spheroid on the downside, then it was overlaid with a thick layer of extracellular matrix, and top of the thick extracellular matrix, I have seeded my macrophages. So uh, by the time, uh, tumor secretes the, uh, the factors that will call upon the macrophages towards it, and in response to those factors, macrophages migrates towards the spheroid and get incorporated into the spheroid. So I observed that in case of MCR, uh, in case of different types of uh, macrophages, uh, these cancer cells are smart. They are, they, are, they are okay with any type of macrophages. Let it be activated macrophage or let it be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. They are ready, readily re uh, 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 happy to recruit any type of macrophage and they are ready to uh, brainwash them into pro-tumorogenic macrophage. They are, they are really thankful for the plasticity of macrophages. So uh, next, I, I changed this uh, MCF macrophage with uh, MDMB231 macrophage. As these two types of uh, tumors are inherently having different nature, I wanted to check whether these have any impact on the macrophage migration. And I found that, yes, MDA231 has a better uh, capacity to recruit macrophages towards it. And hence, it proves that my model can recapitulate the inherent nature of the uh, spheroids, being MCF being a cold type of tumor and MDMB231 being a hot type of tumor, MDMB231 were found to be efficient in terms of recruiting macrophages towards itself. So to support this, I checked uh, secretome of these MDMB231 and MCF7 spheroids. And to, uh, nothing to surprise, MDMB231, they uh, express high levels of cytokines, chemokines that will recruit macrophages towards them, as well as uh, the growth factors, different, which will brainwash the uh, recruited macrophages. So next, uh, uh, that's, uh, so, sorry, that's how the recruited macrophages look like inside a spheroid. <clears throat> So during their journey towards the uh, tumor microenvironment, several pathways are getting upregulated and downregulated in these uh, types of macrophages, and they start secreting different types of secretory molecules, and they start performing either uh, pro-tumorogenic or anti-tumorogenic types of functions. So uh, as I have uh, spoke earlier in my slide that they can perform plethora of, uh, sorry, they can perform plethora of functions. I was more interested in studying tumor migration, how these recruited macrophages help cancer cell in migration. So what I did, I took this uh, macrophage incorporated spheroids and put them on a flat 2D cell culture treated platform. And here I have used MCF7 uh, spheroids. 
uh, MCF7 being an epithelial type of cell, they take quite long, and being a non-invasive type of cell, they take quite long to spread, and uh, their migration is typically epithelial type. That means they show a collective migration. Whereas, uh, the macrophage incorporated spheroid, they start their migration as early as within two hours of attachment, and I, I, I could see that uh, single cells started coming out from the spheroids. So that means macrophage influence cancer cell migration, uh, the speed of migration, as well as they can uh, induce plasticity in the cancer cell migration. So in conclusion, we, I can conclude that the spheroids can be uh, used as a model to recapitulate this tumor immune crosstalk, and these can chemotactically recruit macrophages, they can polarize them into TAM, and the polarized TAM then can help cancer cells to migrate. So in future, actually right now I'm currently working with uh, use of heterospheroid instead of a homospheroid and use of primary monocyte derived macrophages instead of uh, cell line derived macrophages. But due to time constraint, I did not show the data here. Uh, later on, I want to work with uh, tumor uh, derived, uh, sorry, patient derived tumoroids and eventually I will sh uh, replace these spheroids and tumoroids with organoids. And uh, later on, I'm planning to have an omics analysis of these uh, TAMs, which have been in vitro developed and uh, their omics analysis will review, uh, may reveal or shed light so, uh, on some uh, novel biomarkers and signaling pathways that are involved into TAM, polarization of uh, macrophages into TAMs. So with this, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my guide, Dr. Tuli Ma'am, and my lab mate, uh, Sukanya, and my juniors who are like, currently working with me. Also, this is a previous batch of MSc students working with us, and especially Disha and Saurav for making such uh, beautiful diagrams, uh, for using their aesthetic, uh, art, artistic work and helping me in making those diagrams. So I would like to thank IBB, Pune University, for the infrastructure, central instrumentation facility for the confocal facility, uh, Department of Biotechnology if for three minutes fellowship. Left. Yeah, yeah, I'm just done. And EMBO uh, for the uh, travel grant, and yeah. so thank you. Any questions? Okay, thank you, Abhishek. Thank you.